Welcome to Write Your Book in a Flash with Dan Janelle, the only podcast where you'll learn how successful people just like you have grown their businesses, expanded their influence, and made more money by writing a book. On each episode, you'll learn the inside secrets to help you create a book that can serve as a powerful marketing tool to skyrocket your business. I'm your host, Dan Janelle. I help thought leaders, business executives, and entrepreneurs write their books. To find out more, go to writeyourbookinaflash.com. Welcome, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome our guest today, Nadia Bilchik. How are you, Nadia? I am fabulous, and I love that we are talking books. In the age of Netflix, don't forget the power of books. Fantastic. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about your varied background? So I have a very eclectic background in that I started my career making feature films. I've died in all of them. Yes, I've had my back slashed. I've been shot. I've been strangled. In fact, one was with Gary Busey on the island of Skiathos in Greece. And then I studied journalism and went into television and worked for Mnet Television in South Africa and then CNN Television in the United States. And I've been both in front of and behind a television camera. And I've also taught and spoken and trained in the area of communications for the last three decades. Fantastic. That's uh, a background that no other guest has been, has had (laughs) on my 72 previous episodes of this podcast. Uh, So you're also unique in another way in that you've already written three books and you've branded yourself. Tell us how that whole process happened. And feel free to name the books themselves because they all tie under a central theme. Thank you. So the first book I wrote was called Own Your Network. And it was one of the first programs that I did when I came to Atlanta. I had a friend who worked for Coca-Cola and she said to me, I know you do presentation skills and I know you do media training, but what we really need is a program that can help people communicate across silos. So we need a relationship building course. And together we created a networking course for Coca-Cola. And that became my Own Your Network book. And it was very interesting process, Dan, and I'm speaking to the book maestro himself, Mm -hmm. but I took my program and I transcribed it and that became the basis for Own Your Network. After Own Your Network, I partnered with Kat Cole, who is just remarkable. She's been Forbes 40 under 40 and an undercover boss. She's now the CEO of Focus Brands. And we wrote a book called Small Changes, Big Impact. And that's about maximizing your presence and leveraging the power of your personal brand. Because we found that what really people lacked in their careers was an understanding of the importance of image and exposure and how that contributed to their overall brand. Harvey Coleman spoke about the pie, performance, image, and exposure. Don't underestimate image and exposure. So we wrote extensively about that. And we wrote about your physical presence and your virtual presence and your interpersonal and your social. And often it's the very small things you can do that have the biggest impact in accelerating your career. And then a couple of years ago, I partnered with a South African friend and we wrote about owning your space, which is a woman's guide to polish, poise and empowerment. But it's more than that. It's about, do you really own your space? Do you give yourself permission to be an expert, to be a thought leader? And that That was published by Pan Macmillan, and we've had various iterations. And currently, I'm working on book number four. And Dan, so delighted to have your expertise on this one with a fellow speaker and entrepreneur, David Asano. And we're writing about how people have managed to reinvent during COVID-19, but making it very practical, very accessible, telling our stories, but also giving people very strict guidelines of how do you re-energize, ramplify? How are you resilient? So all of my books have come from my programs and what I teach and train and speak in. And all of them have been excellent calling cards and a great way of telling potential clients what I can offer their employees, participants, audience, clients. Excellent overview. That's great. Um, I love the idea of taking a course and turning it into a book. And a lot of people listening have courses and they wonder, what are the steps involved and what have you learned about uh, taking your course? Because you just can't take, you know, 68 pages of the manual and turn it in, and say, this is my book. What other steps are involved in turning it into, into a book? So every process as you, I call Dan the book maestro. As Dan knows, is different. But certainly 
the ability to take your program and even if it means taping it so that you've got content and getting a court reporter to transcribe it. I have hired many court reporters who just transcribe what I say because for those of you who are listening to this, who are speakers, who are facilitators, who are trainers, often our brilliance comes in front of an audience and things we say verbally. The written word is so different. So the ability to tape it, transcribe it, and then get a skilled partner who can take your transcription and what you say and turn that into good writing. And I recommend, and with all my books, I've had that writing partner because fundamentally I'm a speaker and the spoken word is different to what we write. And so often people are so disappointed when they transcribe something and they go, wow, that isn't great in written form. So it's the ability to find somebody like you, Dan, who can bridge that gap for them. Very true. Uh, I'm always amazed when I look at my own transcripts and I, st I talk, I start, I stumble, I start over a question again. When we're talking in real life, this is the way people talk and it seems perfectly natural. We know exactly what the other person is saying, but on a transcript, it looks like I'm an idiot. <laughs> right. But what it does help you do for speakers, and particularly people who've got programs, it gives you structure. So when I think of my networking program, and I teach it under a variety of guises, sometimes we call it kick your relationships up a notch. Sometimes we call it expert networking, both in person and online. Sometimes we call it lighting the fire, tips and techniques to build rapport every time you communicate. There's so many different ways that I have managed to couch the concept of networking. But what it did was give me a structure because I had done day programs or sometimes even two day programs on the concept of relationship building. What it gave me was, okay, step number one, what is networking really? And I always speak about that. You know, people think that networking is coming up to Dan Janelle and saying, you know, please can I have access to your network? Networking is as much about being a go-giver as it is being a go-getter. So what is networking? And then in my program, I have a big section on what stops us. What stops us nurturing existing relationships and what stops us building new ones? Well, then I have to build that out in the book. What are your networking obstacles? And whereas in a course, I would pause, I would get feedback from the audience. Now I'm having to do it differently. How do you create participation and get people into active mode in the written word? So it definitely requires a different set of skills. But at the same time, if you're watching and listening to this and you're a coach and you're teaching certain things, it's to keep saying to yourself, how would I put that in the written form? Excellent. Very interesting information. You know, you hit on a, a point there about networking. There are about 20 million networking books at last count, maybe 21 million by this point. A lot of people in our, who are listening here are saying, you know, I'm in sales or I'm in training or I'm in this category. Do we really need another book about sales training? And you've just proven that, yes, there is another reason to write a networking book. Why don't you uh, walk us through the process? Because you must have said something to yourself like, there, there are a million networking books out there. How can I make mine different? So the key here is to say, what is my story? So yes, while there are hundreds of thousands of books on networking, there's nobody who's gone from being a primetime anchor in Johannesburg, South Africa, and having her own media and presentation skills school and being a household name one day and moving to Atlanta, Georgia, another continent, another country, another side of the road, and building up a career again. So there's nobody. What is unique is my story. What is my unique is my experience. And the same thing for you. Whoever is listening to this, what is unique is that no one person has the same story. And it's to weave in universal truths, which are foundational truths, which is that we know that networking is a mutually reciprocal relationship, right? That's a universal truth. We know that we give to people who give back to us. But how do I illustrate that? And that's where the brilliance comes in. I can illustrate it with my own unbelievable stories of moving here and starting again. And that's, you've, you and I have spoken about people have imposter syndrome or a lack of confidence with their content. But 
if you take a moment and think, nobody else has my story. And that's what gives us the confidence. I also remind people, I say, you know, you're one person in a very competitive world, right? We all are, but you are the world to at least one person. But you are the world to a group of people who want to hear from you, who are inspired by your story. So our stories are what sets us apart, and we couch it in universal truths. Perfect. Uh, you mentioned also, actually, to go back to another point, you have three books. I'm wondering how you get the ideas for your books. Are they driven by your marketplace or research, or how do you come up with your ideas? So mine have been very organic in that Own Your Network was the course I was doing for Coca-Cola. And I really realized that to be a true, what we call thought leader, which is a go-to person in that area, you want to become an expert. I need somebody to talk on this. Let's have Nadia Belchick. So having the book adds to that credibility. So that's how Own Your Network came. Kat Cole and I, and she's so fascinating, by the way, because she and I partnered together on many programs. And we really created our book out of our program. So that was organic. Own Your Space came out of a concept, and it's so interesting how people come out with ideas for books, is the number one question, Dan, that I get asked is, before you stand up in front of a group of people, before you go live on television, do you get mm -hmm. nervous, right? That's the number one okay. question I get asked. So I really wanted Own Your Space to answer that. And the concept of Own Your Space came when I was at acting school and one of our lecturers said, the key is whether you are playing the lead or a small part, what sets you apart is that absolute giving yourself permission to be there. You have the right to be there. And she always used to say you have to own your space. And confidence projected looks like you belong there, looks like you own your space. So Own Your Space came out of, okay, we know that confidence is an important quality to exude. How do we teach it? How do I teach people to be confident? And that's how Own Your Space. So in essence, what I hope all the people who go through my classes and programs, and I'm now doing one called Webcam Confidence, is that absolute sense of permission. I have the right to be the person delivering this information. So that's how Own Your Space came about. So ideas come randomly. The idea for the fourth book came out of COVID-19 and lengthy discussions with a colleague, friend, and then going, we need to write about this. Mm -hmm. So ideas come in, in many forms. But my advice to my clients who are interested in writing is, what do you want to share? What do you feel that you know that can be of value to others? You have to start with that. What about my story, my experience, my perspective can be of value to you? I've never written a book going, I want to make money from the book. That's not something I do because I also know that historically books are an extension of your overall brand and they've got to start with what do I have to share? And I know everybody's experience is different. I've just gone, how do I create an addendum to what I already teach to my community? Nadia, you've written a lot of books with other people. Mm -hmm. uh, what advice do you give for getting along well with your co-author and just deciding who does what? Yes. So, Dan and I, the first book was the easiest, the one I wrote alone, by the way. <laughs> um, the second one with Kat, we got together and we brainstormed and we did have some differences of opinions. But ultimately, it's like any relationship. You have to be able to give and take. You can't have one person who's dictating to the other. So, like any relationship, it's got to be one of compromise and what do we both want out of this? And there's got to be an absolute collaboration. I know of horror stories of people who partnered with others on books because one person is so dogmatic and so is the other person. All the people I've partnered with have been real team players. And interestingly enough, also, Dan, people play different roles. So in Own Your Space, my co-author was very much the project manager, and I was very much the content and ideas and but she was wonderful in driving the process and making sure we got it done. You need to play different roles because writing a book, says I to the 
and I will say it again, to the book Maestro is arduous. So you do need somebody who's prepared to take the role of project manager or outsource it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, what other tips have you, or tricks or tactics have you learned that now that you wish you knew when you first started writing books? I wish I'd started with the end in mind. So strategically from the beginning, and I will say for my first three books, I think I did that. With the fourth book, it came out of, this is going to be a great idea. We could have been a little more strategic first, which is before we actually started writing, it would have been helpful for David and I to get together and say, you know, who is this for? What do we want to achieve? We got a little carried away with our enthusiasm and the content without having the structure. And it was a little less clear than the other books, which were based so much on my programs. Interesting answer, especially since we're working together. <laughs> yes. And I'm so delighted, by the way, to have you, Dan, because it would have been, and this is for those of you who are thinking about writing, my suggestion is go to Dan first. Say to Dan, this is what I want to write. Let him come up with a plan for you and then start writing because that saves you a lot of time and energy and frustration. However, and there's a big however here, Dan, is that so many people say, I want to write, I want to write. And I'll never forget when Own Your Network first came out, a friend said, Nadia, it's so simply written. You know, it was very accessible. It was very basic stories and, and just not a complicated concept. And he said, you know, in fact, when I read it, I thought it was so easily written that I could have written it. And I looked at him and said, yes but you didn't, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I think there's such a big gap between those of us who want to and who really make it happen. Well, definitely. In fact, uh, I've had many people come up to me and say the same thing, and that they, oh, I could have written a book like that. Well, you didn't. That's the difference when people write books. And, and you know, and, and you books. said that you can't be sabotaged by feeling like it's not unique enough. You've got to be confident that your story is unique enough. And at this stage of my career, I have built up a community. So often they'll read what I've written because it's from me and my unique experience. But there's got to be something in it that says I am sincere, I am authentic. And something I believe I've learned, I would love to share with you. I want to add value to you. I'm going to take notes here. Thank you for bearing with me. Okay, uh, last set of questions on marketing. How do you use your book to get more consulting and more speaking engagements? What I typically do is if I'm approached by an organization and let's say they want me to talk to, and it's usually employees and it's usually groups and all, oh my gosh, if I, I have a very eclectic group of people from pharma companies to physicians to Fortune 500s to the Coca-Cola, I mean, very broad spectrum. But I will then say, usually once they've booked me, I will say, would you like to have a book for each participant or each audience member at the same time? I probably haven't done as good a job as I could have about sharing content, breaking things up. I could have done a better job of using them in that way. Each time I've launched a book, I've used quotes from the book, I've used the covers. I've interviewed my, my co-author. We've done videos. So, for example, with Own Your Space, Laurie Milne and I who lived in South Africa. We did a series of videos. So for each chapter, we chatted about it. And we, what happened was, let's say, the first chapter was around owning your headspace when it comes to owning your space and confidence. So she interviewed me on that. Then we had a chapter on owning your time. And I interviewed her on that. And then we said, in the book, in this chapter, this is what you can glean from it. And then we did a chapter on owning your ask. We were going to call it toning your ask, but then decided not to. <laughs> Could have been a bit risque. But I've been quite random in how I've used it, but certainly in my title, I will always say author, speaker, and it adds credibility. It adds credibility, no doubt. And it's always a wonderful thing when somebody comes up to you and says, you know, I read your book and it really helped me. Or I gave your book to 
my daughter's graduating class. Oh, I haven't told you about the other book. I was special editor on a book called Life After College. And they used a lot of my stories in that, my whole life after college, you know, what they don't teach you in college that they should. <laughs> Great idea. Nadia, who is your perfect client and how can they get in touch with you? So, Dan, you're getting me at a very interesting time in my life because I have just created my first asynchronous online program, which means that anybody would like to do this without me. I've got lots of videos and tutorials and it's called webcam confidence. So right now, anybody who wants to improve their virtual presence, if you want to come across virtually just with a greater impact, if you want to connect with your customers and connect with your clients, and if you're in the corporate world, if you want to enhance your image and add your exposure, I have, and it's all on Nadia Speaks, and it's called Webcam Confidence, From Self-Conscious to Self-Confident, Maximizing Your Virtual Presence. So I'm excited about that. But really, you know, I enjoy, and right now I've been doing it virtually, speaking to large and small groups just about do I maximize every interaction? Do I communicate with greater impact? And there's a large emphasis right now on leading virtually, collaborating virtually, showing up virtually. So tomorrow morning, I will be speaking to a group of people about maximizing their virtual presence. And it's all about making the best of every online meeting. And the next day, I'm talking to a group about relationship building, both in person and online. But of course, a big emphasis now is virtual because it's not as easy as you think to go from in-person to virtual and be powerful, impactful, influential. Definitely. Uh, so thank you so much for being with us today, Nadia. Uh, your website, is it Nadia Speaks? NadiaSpeaks.com. And watch the space because hopefully Nadia Belchick, David Asarno, with the guidance of Dan Janelle, <laughs> will bring you our next book. Exact title, TBD. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Nadia. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for listening to Write Your Book in a Flash with Dan Janelle, the only podcast that shows you exactly how people just like you have built their businesses by writing a book. If you'd like to write your book but don't know where to start, you can find great information at writeyourbookinaflash.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next week with another insightful interview to help you become a top business leader.